Hello, and welcome to this presentation on CA SMPE Internet Service Retrieval Configuration. Please note the disclaimer. In this presentation, we will go over what CA SMPE Internet Service Retrieval is, in addition to a high level overview of how it works. We will show you where to obtain the digital certificates required for the configuration and give sample commands for creating a key ring to add the certificates to. There will also be sample commands for granting user access to the certificates and key ring. Lastly, we will go over the fields in the sample SMPE receive order JCL and explain how to point to the key ring we created. Some terms we will be using include ESM, which refers to ACF2, Top Secret, and RACF, User ID, which refers to an ACF2 logon ID, Top Secret ACID, and RACF user ID, and CA, which refers to a certificate authority. All commands and links in the presentation will be included in a text file available for download. CA SMPE Internet Service Retrieval allows a site to obtain maintenance from the internet by running an SMPE job on the mainframe. The SMPE job issues a new form of the receive command to place a service request to the order server, which then goes out to a download server that fulfills the request. This process appears all as one step to the end user. Various types of order requests can be made, including missing PTFs, whole data, critical only, recommended service, and even specific PTFs or APARs can be requested. With CA SMPE Internet Service Retrieval, service requests can be made on demand or can also be ran as scheduled jobs, which allows for a more automated approach to downloading maintenance. Setting up CA SMPE Internet Service Retrieval greatly simplifies the maintenance retrieval process and is a better method than manually going out to Broadcom's support website to download PTFs to then upload and apply to the mainframe. For a high-level overview of how SMPE works behind the scenes, on the left we have a terminal user who submits a batch SMPE receive order job. It communicates to the Broadcom automated order server, which processes the request and stages a package file to the Broadcom download server. The order server provides SMPE with the information to authenticate to the CA download server and then download the package files. More specifically, the order server provides SMPE with the CA download server hostname and a temporary user ID and password for that server, which are unique for the specific package to be downloaded. SMPE then goes out to the Broadcom download server to download the maintenance. Again, this process appears all as one step to the user submitting the job. All communications between the client and Broadcom order and download servers are performed using an SSL connection so the data is encrypted. To accomplish this, both the client, which is SMPE, and the server use X509 certificates. There are three certificates that are required. These include the user certificate, which identifies the client, which is SMPE user ID, to the Broadcom servers, and two server DigiCert certificates that serve to confirm the identity of the Broadcom server application. In the next slides, we will go over how to download these certificates. To get started, you must be a registered user on Broadcom support. If you're not already a registered user, you can become one by registering at support.broadcom.com. After registering, or if you are already registered, go to the Broadcom Support Certificate site. You'll be prompted to log in if you're not already logged in. Enter the email and password you registered with for Broadcom Support. This process will need to be completed every year because the user certificate has an expiration date of one year from download. A certificate dialog window will open as shown on the next slide. On the Generate Order Certificate page, select the extension type. Either .p12 or .pfx can be selected. Enter an encryption passphrase that will be used to encrypt the PKCS12 package that contains the user certificate and its associated private key. Remember this passphrase. You must specify it again later when adding the certificate to your ESM database. Be mindful that this passphrase is case sensitive. Click the Generate Certificate button to save the certificate to your workstation. Be sure to take note of the location of the certificate file on your workstation. Next, we will need to download the two server certificates by going to the two websites listed. These links will be provided in a text file that accompanies this presentation. Be sure to take note of the location of the certificate file on your workstation. 
and will make things easier during the upload process if all three certificates are in the same location. After downloading the three certificates, it is time to upload them to ZOS. You may choose whatever method you would like, but there are important formatting parameters to keep in mind. When uploading, be sure to specify RecFM equals VB, LRECL equals 84, and ASCII. Here we also give you sample FTP commands that can be used in your favorite workstation terminal. In your terminal, navigate to the directory where your certificates are stored and issue the following commands one at a time, substituting the blue fields for your own information. Even though the exact commands differ for each security product, it is important to remember that the overall steps to accomplish are the same. In the following slides, we will cover how to create the keyring, insert the certificates into the database, and connect them to the keyring we created. We will do this for each security product. Here are the commands for ACF2. We start by creating a keyring. Please note on the insert of the keyring that the first qualifier, in this example user1, is the logon ID that owns the keyring. After creating the keyring, add each of the three certificates that were uploaded in the previous section to the ACF2 database. Make a note of the certificate label for the user certificate, in this example, SMPE client certificate, as this will be needed later when setting up the SMPE JCL. Note the password that is specified on the insert of the user1 certificate. This password should be the same encryption password specified when the certificate was generated. If during the add of this user certificate you receive an ACF2 message saying the signing certificate could not be found, adding certificate with no trust status, issue the following change command. After the certificates have been inserted into the database, they are ready to be connected to the keyring using the ACF2 connect command. Here are the commands for top secret. We start by creating a keyring. Please note the TSS add parameter of the keyring is the ACID that owns the keyring. In this example, this keyring owner is user1. Also, the information in the keyring and label ring parameters can be different. Both parameters are case sensitive. The keyring parameter can only be eight characters long and is needed for the connect step and if creating ring specific rules for validation. Label ring can be up to 237 characters and is used when pointing to the keyring in the SMPE receive order JCL. After creating the key ring, add each of the three certificates that were uploaded in the previous section to the top secret database. Note the PKCS pass parameter that is specified on the TSS add of the user1 certificate. This password should be the same encryption password specified when the certificate was generated. Make a note of the label cert parameter for the user certificate, in this example SMPE client certificate, as this will be needed later when setting up the SMPE JCL. If during the add of the user certificate you receive a TSS message saying sign or not found, adding certificate with no trust status, issue the following replace command. After the certificates have been added into the database, they are ready to be added to the key ring using a TSS add command with the ring data parameter. Here are the commands for RACF. We start by creating a key ring. Please note the ID parameter of the key ring is the user ID that owns the key ring. In this example, this keyring owner is user1. After creating the keyring, add each of the three certificates that were uploaded in the previous section to the RACF database. Note the password that is specified on the RAC dsert add of the user1 certificate. This password should be the same encryption password specified when the certificate was generated. Make a note of the width label parameter for the user certificate, in this example, SMPE client certificate, as this will be needed later when setting up the SMPE JCL. After the certificates have been inserted into the database, they are ready to be added to the keyring with the RAC dsert connect commands. Next, we need to write rules to allow users to access the keyring we created. The rules to write depend on the type of access check you want to deploy. You can write either ring-specific rules or global profile checking rules. You also need to decide what users need access to the keyring, as the access level is different if the user is or is not the keyring or certificate owner. In the following slides, we will give you sample commands for each ESM. An in-depth explanation of the options presented is discussed in a previous video in the series titled Keyring and Certificate Security. Here are the sample commands for ACF2. If you prefer to use ring-specific checking, the resource name takes the format of ringowner.ringname.lst. 
In our example, user 1 is the ring owner, and SMPE ring is the ring name. Please note that the R Data Live resource must be resident in order to use ring specific checks. Here are the sample commands for top secret. If you prefer to use ring specific checking, the resource name takes the format of ring owner dot ring name dot LST. In our example, user one is the ring owner, and SMPE ring is the ring name. Here are the sample commands for RACF. If you prefer to use ring specific checking, the resource name takes the format of ring owner dot ring name dot LST. In our example, user one is the ring owner, and SMPE ring is the ring name. Please note that the R Data Live resource must be active and rack listed in order to use ring specific checks. Next, we'll go over the sample receive order JCL. This JCL can be found in the CA Common Services documentation, and a link will be provided in the text document that accompanies this presentation. Everything in red is what needs to be modified to fit the environment. We'll start with the SMP CSIDD, which will point to the Broadcom product CSI. Next is the SMP NTSDD, which points to the USS directory where the download order will be downloaded to before being received. You will either need to create your own HFS or ZFS directory to point to, or you can point to an existing USS directory that has enough space for the download. The next section is the content parameter in the receive order section. This specifies the order type you wish to download. The majority of these order types are self-explanatory, but if you specify content all, it is important to note that all missing PTFs will be downloaded. For example, the first time you run SMPE with this parameter, it is going to receive all of the maintenance that has been published. The next time you run the SMPE job with the content all parameter, it is only going to receive maintenance that has been published in the time since you last ran the job. The next section to modify is the order server section. The SMPE receive order command uses the order server dataset to provide necessary information about the Broadcom automated order server. The information appears with the order server tag. Do not change the parameters specified for URL and inventory. URL specifies the URL for the order server, and inventory specifies that the generated CSI inventory file is to be in XML format. The CA automated order server does not support the default format of inventory equals IBM. The parameters to focus on are keyring and certificate. Keyring identifies the keyring that contains the user certificate required for access to the order server, where user ID is the user ID of the owner of the keyring, and ring name is the name given to identify the keyring. The user ID and keyring name must be separated by a forward slash. To continue using our example setup, keyring would equal user1 slash SMPE ring. Certificate specifies the label to identify the user certificate that is used for access to the CA automated order server. Following our example from the previous slides, the certificate label for the user certificate was SMPE client certificate. It is important to note that both the key ring and the certificate fields are case sensitive. The following slides will show where to find the information required for the key ring and certificate parameters in the event you need to backtrack to find the information. In ACF2, issue a list command for the keyring. The color-coded information corresponds to the parameters needed for the keyring and certificate fields. In Top Secret, issue a TSS list command for the keyring. The color-coded information corresponds to the parameters needed for the keyring and certificate fields. In RACF, issue a RACDSERT list ring command for the keyring. The color-coded information corresponds to the parameters needed for the keyring and certificate fields. Getting back to the SMPE JCL, the last parameters that need to be specified are the Java Home and Clasp path. Typically, you can request this information from your system's programmer. The Java Home parameter specifies the location for the Java runtime to be used by SMPE, and Clasp path specifies the required application classes for SMPE. Everything in blue is optional and is listed in the event your site utilizes a proxy server or has additional firewall configurations to take into consideration. Additional documentation for CA SMPE Internet Service Retrieval Configuration can be found online at techdocs.broadcom.com. 
A link to the documentation and course notes will be included in a text file available for download. That concludes this presentation on configuring security for CA SMPE Internet Service Retrieval. Thank you and have a wonderful day.